Hey guys, Simplicity here. So today we're going to be talking about the TP-Link um, 5 port desktop switch. Now this specific model, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but is an SF105D. So that is the specific model that we're going to be looking at today. Now um, there's not really a whole lot you can say about something like this. I mean it's a basic um, internet switch that you would use in your household or in a place of business. Uh, this is probably more for a household though. Uh, not really a whole lot to look up on the back except uh, the model number, uh, its uh, specification. So this one is 10 over 100 megabits per second and the power input and the rest you don't really have to worry about. So what a lot of people do is like when they run out of um, ethernet ports on their router or on their existing modem they will tend to need one of these because they don't want another Wi-Fi signal blocking the traffic of the Wi-Fi they already have so they just get this it's called the dummy switch to some people what that basically means is if you were to uh, plug up an existing internet connection the ethernet to this then it would only give internet to these other ports, the other four ports, which really you can use any of them, but I'd recommend using this one because it's outlined. But any of these other four ports will give you the same internet connection with the same speeds, the same ping, everything like that as your original. It will not transmit Wi-Fi, it will not do anything like that. Uh, most of them, I'm not really sure of any of them that actually even have a graphical user interface. It's really just plug and play. So let me give you a quick tour of what you may be expecting to see. So on this side, we have a small DC jack. I'm not really sure how many centimeters it is. You kind of have to play with that number a little bit. But what it basically does is it powers this device and it's pretty small. It doesn't use a whole lot of electricity. Most devices like this run on 12 volts. This one runs on five volts. And if you look on the back, it says right here, five volts, 0.6 amps or 600 milliamps and that's of course the power input you're going to need for this device. Again, as in previous videos, I recommend that you don't play with the power too much. Just use the one that it provides or use one that's the exact specifications. Um, here you can see um, a numbers 1 through 5 and those correspond to the Ethernet ports on the back and of course we have a power light. Now, personally, I've never seen this power light any color except for green, which it turns on immediately when you plug it in. If it's any other color, you may have a malfunction with the device. Just saying. So, um, what you would basically do is, with this specific device, you could plug in your existing internet connection via modem, router, whatever, with Ethernet into any of these five ports and it will power the other four with the exact same internet connection, the exact same ping, everything like that. There may be a little bit of variance in the ping, maybe even the internet connection, but it should be almost the same. Now personally, even though you can use any of these, I always tend to use this one because it's outlined aside from these other four, so it's probably the one that they kind of recommend for you to use. Some of them Actually, you can only plug it into one uh, switch on the back and it will only work with one switch and so on and so forth. Um, so basically, when there's internet traffic in any of these, the lights on the, on the front excuse me, will uh, blink on and off. And a lot of people wonder, why do the lights on my router, modem, or whatever constantly blink? Well, it's because there's internet traffic going through it now. Um, some of them will blink constantly because they're constantly pinging, well, the internet. And some of them will just blink occasionally to show that, you know, they're working, they're functioning. They maybe send a data packet to the device and just things like that. So if you ever wondered why your lights are always blinking, that's probably the reason why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, the small little DC, and I'm going to plug it in. They all light up and then the power light comes on almost immediately. And these other ones, now I will say one thing that I do have about this device that I don't like is that if you look at it from the side, you can't really um, 
tell, you know, which lights are on specifically, like, because just this one solid green light kind of fills up the places of these three right here. Now, that's not so much a problem if you're looking at it from the top, but, you know, a lot of times you're going to probably be looking at the device either from this way or this way, and you can see how it can cause a little bit of confusion. But, as I said before, um, really, most people aren't going to be looking at these for internet traffic or whatever, and they're probably just going to like the fact that they're blinking and turning on and off. I mean, if, if you really just need to know, like, hey, which one of these is blinking on and off, just look at it from the top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug this while I'm thinking about it and show you guys the exact power input I'm using because a lot of people always have questions about that. Just a little standard power brick and um, this specific one, I don't know if you can tell really well, uh, is a DVE switching adapter. Now DVE is pretty common, you're going to see them just about everywhere. And as you can see, the input says plus 5 volts, 500 milliamps. I mean the output, excuse me, uh, plus 5 volts, 500 milliamps, and the input is 120, 240 volts at 200 milliamps. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of times um, devices like this, you know, will take in, uh, they need an input of, for example, 200 milliamps. So it's not going to use that much electricity, you know, it's not going to cost too much in your electric bill as one of them high dollar massive switches that you just think that you need because you really don't need it. This one would be perfect, you know, for the average consumer. And here you can see the output is 5 volts, 500 milliamps. See, so I'm kind of breaking my own rule here because this needs at least 600 milliamps, you know. It needs, it's recommended that you use 600 milliamps for it, but unfortunately I cannot find a power brick to power this that had exactly 600, so, you know, I broke my own rule and I apologize for that. Uh, but let's kind of see this device in action and see exactly what it does. So I would like to apologize about the clutter of wires. Um, it tends to happen all the time and I've been mean to get those cleaned up with some cable ties, but here's what I have. So going into my existing router, I have the internet connection from downstairs going to my modem. So right now, this device is giving me Wi-Fi, and I'll actually cover this device in a, another video because it's actually really, really interesting. And right here, I have my TP-Link. So what I'm going to do is, now this would work both ways, theoretically. You could actually have this plugged into the TP-Link, and you could have the blue wire coming from here to there. But either way, um, it could work both ways. So if, say, that you had the internet going to here, you could just take this blue wire and run it right here. Now, of course, only run it to this one because it's the yellow one and it's where the internet goes and the rest are just uh, switches. So this device doesn't have internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ethernet jack and I'm going to plug it in to one of the ports on the bottom. Okay, there we go. So now, if you look, it appears that I plugged in port number five on here to a port on the router. So now, this device has the ability to give these other four ports internet. And um, now, remember, it can't transmit a Wi-Fi signal, but it, Ethernet is faster than Wi-Fi. It's more reliable. You're less likely to lose a signal on it. I mean, if you have the opportunity to use Ethernet, I strongly recommend it. And you're going to notice that every now and again it blinks. So what this device is basically doing is it is sending data packets through this cable to this to let it know that, hey, I'm still giving you Internet. You have the ability to... Um, send internet to other devices that are connected to you and uh, I don't really know what else uh, to say I mean it's pretty self-explanatory uh, devices like this a lot of people don't really use them and it's kind of sad to say but they're really good and if you have the opportunity to use one in your house you know take it because it saves you a little bit of electricity every year and it gives you such a great connection to devices such as smart TVs or PlayStation 4s or anything of that matter. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video and I hope I helped you guys out and thank you very much for watching.